Why, hello everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to share with you the best pencil sharpeners if you are a beginner colorist or if you're an experienced colorist and you're finding that your pencils are always breaking and just giving you just the blues, then check this video out. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so I know a lot of times you guys have problems with your pencils and you just don't know what kind of pencil sharpener to use or to purchase. Well, I'm gonna sh share with you a surefire way to keep your pencils from breaking and just giving you the most horrible time in the world. All right, we're gonna start off with my absolute favorite pencil sharpener, and that's this Stadler two hole metal sharpener. Guys, this is the holy grail of holy grail pencil sharpeners. It is absolutely amazing for all my pencils, no matter if it's a Prisma, a Faber-Castell Polychromos, a Crayola, whatever pencil you have, this pencil sharpener will get the job done. So what I'm going to do is share with you the pencil sharpeners, and then I'll do a little demonstration on how the pencil sharpeners actually work and sharpen your pencils. So this is my absolute number one. So we're gonna put that to the side. That's Mr. Number One, <laughs> Mr. Number One. <laughs> Mr. Number Two, <laughs> or Mrs. Number Two, <laughs> is this little hand pencil sharpener here. It's from the brand Beauty K. And it says Germany at the bottom. And this is actually an eyeliner pencil sharpener. This comes from Sally, Sally Beauty Supply Store. And it works perfectly for your Prismas or your pencils that don't need to have a lot of lead or wood exposed because they are soft leaded pencils. If you think about it, a Prismacolor is pretty close to an eyeliner. The reason why they make these pencil sharpeners for eyeliners to give you that short lead is because a, a an eyeliner doesn't need to have a lot of the lead exposed because it's so, 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 so like soft and it'll break easily. So they make pencil sharpeners for eyeliners like that. And that's perfect for your Prismacolors because your Prismacolor is super, super soft. So that's my pencil sharpener number two. Pencil sharpener number three. We're keeping in line with the hand sharpeners is the Tagal. I thought the Tagal was it. You know, everyone was ranting and raving about it and saying, you know, it's the best pencil sharpener in the universe, especially for your Prismacolors. But what I found was the Tagal blades get dull very, very, very easily, and they aren't made to change them. So I'll link a video below. I mean, uh, I'll link a video above of how I brought this Tagal sharpener back to life by, you know, disassembling it and sharpening the blade, you know, just like you would sharpen like a, a dull knife. But that was a lot of work, guys. So... I wouldn't recommend it using this sharpener because it's just so, the blades get dull so quickly and you'll have to buy a whole new sharpener. It's worth, it's not worth going into it and sharpening the blades if, you know, if it's four or $5, you know, it takes an hour to do the job. So I wouldn't pay myself $4 for an hour job. <laughs> well, it doesn't take quite an hour, but it's still too much of a headache, of a headache. My next sharpener is this sharpener here from Coom. And Coom was supposed to be known as like this amazing brand. It says made in Germany. And you know, if a sharpener says made in Germany, it's more than likely gonna be a pretty good sharpener because this Statler one is made in Germany also. All of these are made in Germany. This one is made in Germany, this one is made, but this one is made in Japan. So, uh-oh, Tagal. Actually, yes, Japan. But this Coom sharpener is pretty good, but it just doesn't quite give me the same feel or it doesn't give me the point that I want. So I'll show you what I mean when I get to that one. Last in the hand crank sharpeners is this teeny tiny little Coom sharpener made in Germany. And I don't need to say much about this. A lot of you know about, you know, these teeny tiny ones. So I'll give you a demonstration on that. 
All right, so next we have my favorite electric sharpener. Now, I've had this West Point I Point, no, not West Point, Westcott I Point Orbit electric sharpener for years. I mean, so many years, and it's lasted. The blades haven't gotten dull, but I just don't use it very, very often. I need to start using it more often because it's a really good sharpener. But I will show you how I use an electric sharpener with my pencils. I wouldn't dare put any of my high-end pencils in an electric pencil sharpener because I can't control it. So I would only use this for, you know, budget pencils, pencils that I don't mind, you know, getting eaten up, but them getting eaten up in an, elect in, in an electric sharpener is all up to you. It's how long you leave it in there. So I have that one. And he doesn't want to lay down, so I'll let him stand up. Why are all my pencil sharpeners males? I don't know, guys. <laughs> Next, I have my only hand crank pencil sharpener, which is the Dale 133. You guys have heard all the rants and raves about this pencil sharpener and they are all true. This is an, an, an amazing, I'm going to have to do a lot of editing to this video because my tongue is getting so tired. <laughs> this is an amazing pencil sharpener, but, but the reason I don't use it is because the pencil that I enjoy m using the most is my Prismacolor pencils, which I will not dare sharpen them in this sharpener because this sharpener gives a lead that's too much exposed. So, and I cannot use my pencil, my Prisma colors if the leads are exposed too much. And you will see what I'm talking about. So, let's get started with the demonstration. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to start out first by showing you how I use this Stadler two hole metal sharpener. But before I do that, I just want to show you a Prismacolor color pencil that has never been sharpened. Now, you see that? Can you see that lead? Okay. This is how your pencils come in your box of Prismacolor premieres. Most pencils do not come looking like this with a very short lead, okay? Only Prismacolor. You might have asked yourself, why? Why does Prismacolor come new in the box looking like this? Because apparently that's how they want you to use your pencil because every company is going to give you the best chance to succeed and be successful in using their products right out the box. They're gonna give you like an idea how to best use their products, especially when they're coming straight out of the box. So apparently Prismacolor is telling you, hey, the best way to use our pencils are with a short lead exposed and short wood exposed, okay? But, but most people that's on YouTube that are colorists, they will show you their Prismacolors looking like this okay if you use your prisma colors with a very 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 sharp point they are almost guaranteed to break on you every single time even if you're a light-handed colorist that pencil is just so soft that the leads just do not supposed to be that exposed. That's not my de de decision or my opinion. That's fact, okay? Because of how they come to you in the box. So what I'm going to do now, you've already, I've already demonstrated how leads look when you use the small hole in this metal Statler pencil sharpener. You get this beautiful medium length uh, point. Now, to be honest, guys, this point is not horrible. It's not horribly exposed like for say, for example, if I used the Dale pencil sharpener. Now let's do, let's use this Prismacolor uh, pencil and let's, let's do the, let's do the Dale 
pencil sharpener. All right, I think I wanna go this way. All right, so we have our pencil in there. I don't like, that's taking too long, uh-uh. <laughs> All right, let's let's try it again. Is it all the way? Point? Okay, here we go. There we go. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Let's see. Now this is the point you get with the Dale pencil sharpener. Okay. Now let's compare that to the metal hole. Okay. So you get. A, a bit of more of a finer, thinner, more pointy point with the Dale uh, manual hand crank pencil sharpener, but I still wouldn't use my Prismas with either one of these points. I, I will break it soon as my pencil hit the paper. It's going to be broken, okay? So we have those two examples. Now I am going to sharpen this pencil with my two hole statler, but I'm going to use the big end, okay? Now, the way you wanna use the larger end is you want to firmly stick your pencil in that hole in the center of that big hole, but you wanna stick it in there firmly because you don't want it moving around in that larger hole because that larger hole is not really made for a smaller pencil like this, but just check out the point that it gives you in that hole. So firmly push it in, so you can have full control and then you turn your pencil pretty slowly and that's three times. I want a couple of more turns. That's four. That's enough. So four or five turns will give you this type of point. Now this is like almost double. <laughs> that's double the point and the wood exposure and the lead exposure as the Prismacolor, you know, as they give you but it's still a very, very short point compared to your Dale pencil sharpener. And it's still a very short point compared to the smaller hole of the pencil sharpener here, the Statler pencil sharpener. So those are the differences you have between those pencil sharpeners. So we've already tried the Dale. So we're gonna put that there. All right. So that's that. And we, I love this pencil sharpener, guys. It is, it is just absolutely amazing. Now let's go with my second favorite one. Let's show you what kind of point you're going to get with the small handheld pencil sharpener. The only reason I don't use this one a lot is because I don't like that it doesn't have a way to catch your shavings. I hate having to have shavings out and all exposed. So here's your sh pencil. And this is one of the pencils that that, that Spring Hill paper killed. <laughs> you see how it looks, guys? It, it It's so sad. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna sharpen this using the small hole. So let's see how it looks. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, there we go, that's it. I really like that point. Now that point, is it a little longer? Nope, that's the same point that the Stadler will give you. So guys, if you can't find that Statler metal two-hole sharpener, go and get you a couple of these Beauty K metal pencil sharpeners from Sally's Beauty Supply. Oh my goodness, that is a perfect, perfect, perfect point. So that's my number two. So these are my two favorites. The only reason I, like I said, that I don't use this one as much is because it doesn't have a way to catch your shavings. And I'm not all happy about that. All right, next, let's go to the Tagal. Now, the Tagal sharpener, uh, 
it used to be my favorite, but like I told you at the beginning, the whole story about that, of it getting dull. So, let's just try this Shuttle Art Black Pencil in here on number one. And it's not doing anything. Number one is not... Oh, yes, it is. So, it was just kind of just shaving off, you know... I like that point. Now, like I told you, I love my Tagal, but I had to take it apart in order to get the blade back where it would do a pencil like this. So compare the Tagal sharpener to this, and on number one, it gives you pretty much almost the same lead as the lead that comes with, the lead that comes on the pencils when you get them straight out of the box out of Prismacolors. And you might be wondering, why my black shuttle art is so tiny? Well, because the lead was broken inside when I first got these and I tried to sharpen it to have like a long lead exposed and it kept breaking in my pencil sharpener. So I had to give it a small point in order to keep it from breaking any further. That's how you stop breakage on your pencils, especially if the leads are broken inside of the pencils. You need to put a small, short lead on that pencil. I have saved so many pencils with this method. And I'm going to show you one of my Prismacolors that, look at that, that is split all the way up to the lead. Now, I know you'll probably look at that and say, oh my goodness, that pencil there needs to go in the garbage can. Well, because I keep a short lead on it, I don't ex let the lead be exposed too much. I can use this pencil for the th two and a half years that I've used it for and it not just be rubbish and keep breaking. My lead does not break when I keep the lead short, like on a pencil like, like that, like a lead, like a point like that. All right, moving on to the next one. This comb. I don't know why I don't like this comb sharpener. I need to see why I don't like it. Let's sharpen, let's see, this Blick pencil here with the short, I mean, not short, <laughs> with the small hole. I think I don't like it because it takes so much to get a point. It takes just two minutes. You shouldn't have to turn a sharpener that many times. It's probably dull. But that's the point you get on this comb. And I think that's why I didn't like it because it just took too much to try to sharpen it. And plus it gave a, a, a little bit uh, longer lead than what I liked. Now let's sharpen this sad little green with the metal two hole comb sharpener. And I've heard some um, people say that you should not, whoa, that is, that only took like <laughs> three turns. Some people say you should turn the pencil sharpener instead of the pencil. I can't do that. I feel backwards and retarded and I end up dropping the pencil and the pencil sharpener. So I have to turn the pencil. <laughs> but that little comb sharpener, oh my gosh, that gave an amazing lead. Woo, okay. But still, most of my pencils, I will not use them with a lead that exposed because I'm a heavy-handed colorist. And soon as that lead tip touched that paper with a tip like this, it's gone. I'm going to break it every time. Even if I try to do it lightly, it's going to go bloop. Woo, yeah. All right, guys. Next, 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 next is the... electric sharpener so if you were sharpening like a whole set of pencils that's when I would probably pull out the electric sharpener but one thing about me I don't sharpen my pencils before I use them I know that they come in the package with a protective coating on them and they don't give the best results when they're um, when they're straight out the package and not sharpened but I feel, hey, I'll eventually get past that coating. I'm not wasting any pencil lead or any, <laughs> I'm not wasting my pencil like that. That's just me. I'm a super cheap skate, I guess. So 
that's just me. It just, I would just not want to sharpen my pencil away for no apparent reason. So, but anywho, let's stick it in here. That's one. You can almost kind of feel when an electric sharpener is, uh, you know, sharpening too much. That's what I would do. I'll put it in there for a few seconds and then I'll take it out to see where it is. Okay, and maybe one more. Maybe one more. I'm not doing no more. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point you'll get with your electric sharpener. So that's a pretty good point, but I wouldn't use an electric sharpener too much. That's, that's not bad there. This is about the best electric sharpener that I've seen a lot of them on YouTube. And this is about the best one that I've seen. So I would advise if you want an electric sharpener to go and try to find this one. Again, this is the Eye Point Orbit by Westcott. And I absolutely love it. It's durable. It has lasted me three years because I got it at the beginning of my journey when I was having hand problems. And I still have a lot of problems with my hands hurting. So using um, a manual sharpener like these was kind of out of the question. But when I found this one, this one is so easy on my hands. I absolutely love it. So there you have it, guys. The best pencil sharpeners for a beginning colorist or an experienced colorist that's having breakage problems. So if you don't want your pencils to keep breaking on you, there's two things wrong. Either you're sharpening them to a point where the lead is exposed too far, okay? Or the pencil is broken in the inside and, well, actually... There's only one reason why you'll keep having pencil breakage. Yeah, that's the only number one reason why your pencils are breaking. Too much of the lead is exposed. Now, if that pencil is short, the lead is short and it's still breaking, then the lead is broken in the inside. And you'll just have to probably sharpen that. Don't don't have don't keep sharpening the pencil every time the lead gets dull or breaks, just sharpen it just enough to complete your project. Don't, don't always have a sharp point because think about it. You only need sharp points when you're trying to get particular details, get in a little detail spot. You don't need sharp points to just kind of straight color or go over a large area or to blend or shade. What, what I do, the reason why my prismas are still, you know, relatively long after having these pencils for almost three years and not having to replace my set is because I do not sharpen my pencils often, guys. I see so many colorists on YouTube. As soon as their pencil gets looking like, let's see, what's a good example in here? All right, this one. Yeah, as soon as their pencil gets a looking like this, oh, they're sticking that puppy in a sharpener, like seriously. <laughs> but me, I wouldn't sharpen my pencil at this point because if I'm not doing a detailed picture where I need a lot of detail done and get in a small area, this point is just fine. You know, this dullness is just fine because I'm really probably doing a larger area or something and I don't need a, a, a sharp point. So if you don't need your pencil sharpened, don't sharpen it. Give that baby a break. <laughs> but guys, yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was educational and informative to you and just plain downright, hopefully entertaining. But how much entertainment can you get from a pencil sharpener video? Apparently a, not a lot, Nisi, apparently a lot. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm I'm entertaining myself right now. <laughs> Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping by and joining me, hanging out today and talking about pencils and pencil sharpeners, our favorite two things. And don't forget to give this video a big old like if you enjoyed the content. Also, if you enjoy adult coloring, please give this video a big old thumbs up. 
share this video. If you know someone who's been telling you, I've been having problems with my pencils breaking, share this video with them. Share this video on your Facebook page, in your Facebook group, on your Twitters, on your Instagram. I know every colorist I know have breakage problems. I had these problems too when I first started out until I discovered the secret, guys. It's a secret. Don't tell anyone, okay? It's between you and me, okay? <laughs> and the other 3,000 people that watch this, okay? <laughs> oh, yes, guys. Please don't, don't, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out and helps this community to keep growing and helps YouTube to see that, hey, Dollar Diva needs to keep on making videos, especially ones like these. And don't forget to ring that bell, guys. That way you will not miss an episode from me. Thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And as always, happy coloring. Bye.